I was going to do a video on Donald Trump going to be the headline speaker at the Libertarian Party National Convention. I will get to that. But as I was en route, Tim Pool launched a video. I had not seen this news from Glenn Greenwald. As the Daily Wire publicly negotiated a debate with Candace Owens, allegedly, I have not even read the story, it secretly sought and obtained a gag order against her. Uh, what's going on? It is a culture war debate. Why did Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens... And the awkward part about this is the relationship between Daily Wire and Tim Pool. Not debate the issue of Israel, Palestine, anti-Semitism, etc. Well, according to Glenn Greenwald, mm -hmm. the Daily Wire had a prior restraint gag order against Owens, preventing her from actually having this debate. He argues in his Locals post that when Candace Owens said she wanted to debate Ben Shapiro, the Daily Wire went after her saying that was disparaging our company and a violation of our non-disparagement agreement. Wow. Now, it appears in the article. So let's see what Tim says here. But I was wondering what happened, and I put the onus on Candace because Ben had probably said, let's do it this day that, you know, let's come to the studio. Obviously, Candace wouldn't want to go to their studios, but if you want to debate, do the debate in, at their home court. Who cares? But I was wondering why they did that because that wasn't a very Ben Shapiro type thing to do. So let's see. Comment from Jeremy Boring, co-CEO of The Daily Wire, denies this, saying it's inaccurate to the point of being false. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you uh, right off the bat, it doesn't seem correct, this, uh -oh. this, this narrative. And uh, I know that Glenn Greenwald and there are many, I guess you call them uh, um, disaffected liberals that are very much in favor of the protests that we're seeing. Not to accuse Glenn of anything, but I think uh, this is oh no, Tim. this comes off as a bias against the Daily Wire. Oh no, Tim. <laughs> there are a lot of people who don't like the Daily Wire because Ben Shapiro has overtly defended intervention. In I don't know if the story is true or not. I'm saying oh no because Tim is just he said it doesn't seem he's going to have to get to the point because right now it just seems like he's shilling for the Daily Wire. I re highly respect him. Do not get me wrong, but I just have to call it how I see it. In the in the, uh, when it pertains to Israel. And there are a lot of MAGA America First types who do not want the U.S. spending any money overseas. But let's do this. The, the bigger story here, we have this article from uh, just early, uh, earlier last month. Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens split reflects how Israel anti-Semitism divide the U.S. right and what the big picture is. So we'll talk about this news and then we'll get into where we currently are with this narrative that the anti-Semitism bill has banned the Bible. I'm exaggerating. The argument from people is that it made certain passages anti-Semitic, which could get you fined or uh, I don't I don't think there's criminal charges for violations of the Civil Rights Act. I think it's it's civil or I think I think it's a, a fine. I think it is criminal, but I think it's a fine. On April 5th, Candace Owens publicly invited her former Daily Wire, Daily Wire colleague Ben Shapiro to a debate about Israel and the current definition of anti-Semitism. It was Owens criticism of U.S. financing of Israel and her criticisms of Israel's war in Gaza that caused her departure from the Daily Wire two weeks earlier. Now, I, 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 I don't think that's that's correct. I say what? it was Owen's criticisms of U.S. financing Israel that that caused her departure. I don't I don't think that's wholly correct. OK, I, Ben's just, I'm sorry. Glenn's just asserting that I think it played a role for sure. But uh, oh, man, this is rough. <laughs> I don't I don't blame him. But see, here's what I would do. I'm not going to be on a live dissing anybody homie friend of show ray studios or might be wrong or steven ignoramus you just go down the lines carlos patriots of american republic you're never going you will never hear me go on a, a show and diss them so i'm not saying tim needs to go out and diss the daily wire if he's cool with those guys but i will be honest and say i i'm completely biased i had jen perlman on I love Jen and Peter, two of my favorite people that I've met since doing this whole podcasting thing. Go support her, Florida District 25. But I am open about that. I'm like, uh, this is my this is my girl, Jen Perlman. And I'm open about, when I talk about Dave Smith, I, that's my dude, I would vote for him for president. But I, I still will criticize, I still disagree with them, but I'm open with, I am biased. So all I think Tim needs to do is say, 
I rock with them. I'm cool with them. And it would feel, wouldn't it feel so much better? And why is this important? Because I don't really get into talking about Tim like that. I like to use the topics that Tim talks about to create further discussion. It matters because my argument always has been the Daily Wire's goal is to paint a pro-Israel umbrella over the alt media space. And it's the goal of Ferris Wilkes, I believe the name is. The Wilkes brothers, I believe they are. Ferris was the one that's really amped up in it. And the, the funders, the billionaire funders of Prager U and Daily Wire. And they want to paint a pro-Israel umbrella over the whole alt media. And doing that, cozying up with Tim, helping Tim on the Taylor Lorenz, the Tay-Tay sign, and maybe as YouTube cracks down on Tim potentially, who knows if Daily Wire was involved with that or not allegedly but not say they weren't involved tim needs funding he needs help he needs exposure to keep his full operation going there's like three people who maybe one person i mean daily wire might be the only legitimate spot for him to cozy up to he said there's a couple other ones but tenant media is a newer smaller it's the daily wire so if him want the relationship with them you've got to be under the pro that country umbrella and not only does the daily wire make money they dominate that alt space any of the top influencers the top influencers have i don't know what the percentage is probably 80 percent of the alt space as many people pointed out she left the daily wire march around the same time three years later uh three uh three uh, around the same time Oh, Tim. That she had signed the contract three years earlier. Okay, Sorry. what's your point? So if Whoa, 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 Tim, 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 Tim. <laughs> so it, I don't know if she was fired or not, but I was in the live, Tim, the epic live with Jerry Boring, and who, guess who's back? The epic live with Jeremy Boring, and at that time it was Candace Stand, Stan, Young Nick, Elon Musk. I didn't even do a video on that yet. Elon Musk said he's going to reinstate the x account of nick j pause fwen pause tez we are so back i was in that space tim and jeremy boring himself maybe he was just saying it to go along with it but was going along with basically saying we did not fire her he used those words so i don't know what really happened but tim they didn't renew the contract because of the whole other country over there. I mean, you're mincing words. A lot of people pointed out like, oh, it looks like she had a three year contract and it just expired. Certainly they didn't get along for sure. It just, why did it just expire? Tim? Ah! Bull Shapiro in the Daily Wire's CEO, Jeremy Boring, responded by saying they would like to arrange the debate requested by Owens that night. Shapiro appeared to accept the offer, writing an X. Sure, Candace, I texted you on February 29th offering this very thing. Mm -hmm. The Daily Wire co-founder added, Let's do it on my show this Monday at 5 p.m. at our studios in Nashville, 90 minutes live streamed. Mm -hmm. After Owens objected to the format and timing, she and Boring exchanged several tweets mm -hmm. in which they appeared to be negotiating they were and jabbing. agreeing to the terms of the format of the debate. Did it live on that. Owens had suggested the debate be moderated by Joe Rogan or Lex Fridman. Hey, now, now hold on there. I believe she also mentioned my name. Yes, she did. <laughs> and I was like, yes, we'll do it. <laughs> uh, but I do think Rogan uh, would, would, be, would be good. I actually think Lex Fridman would be would be pretty good. I guess I agree. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Fridman. I don't mean that to say I wow. don't like him. I'm just saying I'm not like I don't um, listen to his stuff. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? I like. It him is a weird lot, when you say something like I'm not a big fan. Yeah, no, it no, sounds no. like you don't like them. No, no, no. No, that's, I, that's not a diss. Yeah, I I'm just not into his stuff. Like I, that's how I feel about Jordan Peterson. I'm not. I I don't hate him. I'm just not. I don't listen to every up love from him. Just don't listen to Lex Fridman. I think he would be really good for this, actually, as he mm -hmm. is a rather um, He's fair. calm and neutral yeah. uh, a party in this. Shapiro said he wanted no moderator. The ultimate Even though he had a bad interview with Ye, overall, I still Lex is still pretty fair. Middle MAGA.